of a bottoms up approach and, and really what we're asking uh, the operations and the uh, people to do is, is, is to give us their best estimate as to really what they think they're capable of doing. Obviously, the employees are incentivized you know, to, to achieve those budgets, but we can't tell them how to do their job. So we really need to empower the employees and tell them, basically, you know, this is your function. You know it better than we do, or better than management knows it. It's all driven by the amount of ownership that you want your organization to have for planning. If a plan manager and plan accountant put together a plan budget, they're the ones that own that. They're the ones that have to manage it. If you get everybody in your organization involved in the process, if you have every individual here in some way, shape, or form uh, taking on a piece of that and then managing performance against that, instead of two people managing costs, you now have 200 people, all of whom are engaged in the process, all of whom have ownership for the outcome of that process. Budgets are composed of numbers, which businesses try to live by. But numbers can never tell the whole story where human actions and affairs are concerned. Human factors are always prevalent in any budgeting process. Everybody knows that this is a major responsibility on your performance review every, every year. You're going to be held accountable for delivering against uh, that budget plan that you would lay out for yourself. So I think there's a natural tendency on most people's part to be somewhat conservative when they put that together. Uh, they don't want to be overly aggressive. We really aren't looking to really drive costs down as much as protect ourselves on that performance review. As we've seen, budgets are part of the planning process. They express in numbers the strategic and operating goals of a company. Budgets drive decisions and are used to control and evaluate a company and its management. Budgeting often involves people from many levels and parts of a company, so coordinating budget preparation is vital. Okay, guys. So I would be uploading its assignment seven regarding the budgeting, and I would be uploading it to our WeChat group and also Blackboard, along with the PPTs as well. So let's take a 10 minutes break and then we start again the new chapter. Okay guys, welcome back after the break. Okay, now we'll start a new chapter, chapter 11, which is performance measurements in decentralized organization. So what do we mean by decentralization? So in decentralization, the decisions are made by the person in charge. It means the, the person or the lower staff or low level management, they don't wait for the instruction from the top management. If something, if some situation arise, they have clear guidelines to take you know, decision on the spot. So what are the benefits of decentralization? Number one, top management is free to concentrate on strategy which means how they want to see you know the organization in five years or in ten years this kind of stuff or what kind of businesses they should acquire or expand or what new line of products they should introduce so they talk you know they talk about the strategy about the business sustainability so they just you know free from the tension that you know okay something you know some new situation occur and the low staff or low level management or the middle level management has requested the solution. So for unstructured problems, yes, you can contact the management because this, the situation is new, but for common routine, you know, situations, uh, you don't need to ask to the top management. You can just, you know, take actions, you know, at the spot, that's it. So in that case, top management is free. So lower level, the CNs often based on better information because they are dealing the customers, the employees, you know, directly. So they know the solution, you know, at that time they have the best solution. So lower level managers can respond quickly to customers, right? Rather than just waiting the customer and calling or waiting the email from the top level management, it's time consuming plus uh, it affects the satisfaction level of the customers as well. Plus, lower level man managers, they gain experience in decision making as well. 
So when the managers are, you know, experienced at that level, when they promoted to the top level manager, so they can also decide best because they know the ground realities and they, when they go to the top management, it's easy for them to implement uh, the strategy and or it's easy for them to implement the strategy on all levels because they know that uh, on which level there, there should be like, you know, different kind of needs over there. So how to cater that one. Plus the CN making authority leads to job satisfaction as well. So that is also a very, you know, a big part for absenteeism, which means the employees are leaving the organization, even the salary is the same. So when the studies have conducted, they find out that, you know, they don't find the meaning of the job in that organization. And what is that? Because they don't have the authority to decide or to involve in decision making. So this also improved job, job satisfaction as well. So the disadvantages are that, that the lower level managers, they make decisions, but they don't see bigger picture, right? They don't see, for example, how this decision gonna be impacting on our merger or, or acquisition or whatsoever. So that's why you see nowadays different kinds of like leaks, you know, when one employee is yelling at other employees and a whole of the organization image just, you know, it, they are defaming the organization. Similarly to, or there's a normal like conversation, but that conversation, when somebody leaked it, it becomes, you know, the threat to the, you know, organizational sustainability. So the low level management, when they get, when they are given the decision making authority, so they don't see the bigger picture of the organization. They just see according to their role, according to their <clears throat> canvas, that's it. Maybe a lack of coordination among autonomous managers. When they are giving the authority to decide, they don't think that like that, you know, my decision is going to impact the other one. For example, the marketing manager, when they have decided when they are given the authority to decide how many orders you can just bring. So if marketing manager, he, you know, he don't coordinate with the production manager, right? Then things go wrong. For example, the production manager, he decide by his own that, okay, now this year we will produce 1 million units. It turned out to be that, that the marketing manager came with 150, Uh, 1.5 million uh, units of orders. Both are good, right? Both have the decentralized authority, but they lack the coordination. Why they lack the coordination? Because they think that they don't need to consult with any, anybody else. In that case, the, you know, the whole organization suffers. The lower level managers objectives may not be those of the organization. The lower level managers objective is to just maximize his own salary and that's it. Own compensation, own perks and benefits, own bonuses. So it may be difficult to spread innovative ideas into the organization. We'll see that, how this affect the organization. So, Yes. So <clears throat> the cost, profit and investment centers. So <clears throat> cost, profit and investment centers are all known as responsibility centers. So are responsibility centers who are responsible for the actions uh, or for the decisions that they make. If they are making the cost decisions, then they are uh, you know, responsible for minimizing the cost, not the maximizing the profit, right? So similarly, the cost centers, the profit centers, investment centers, or all three centers. So the departments or the uh, like offices, they are given responsibility. And so managers, the, the idea of responsibility, you know, in center is that 
managers are responsible of the things that they control not the other things like i just give you the example of the production department and and marketing department so if production department fulfills their their budgets and their goals so they say that you know even though the marketing department failed to get the orders they would say that you know we did our targets we should be given bonuses and promotions right if we do not apply responsibility centers or responsibility accounting then what happened the production department will be deprived and would be demotivated right so a cost center is a segment whose manager has control over cost but not over revenues or funds or investment funds so if if one you know uh, the organization makes centers and if one department for example control or uh, you know controller department who only controls the you know cost that's it so that our cost is not increased so his role is just to minimize the cost right and he is not responsible for you know giving you profit because his job is to just minimize the cost that's it profit centers what is the formula for profit revenue minus cost so who has both control over revenue and the cost so he is responsible for only the profit and generating profit so he is responsible for revenues interest receipts sales receipts manufacturing costs receipts commissions salaries right but they are not responsible for business expansion or investment the investment centers most of them they are corporate headquarters so over there they have all these three controls the cost revenue and investment because they were there think about or propose new projects under new projects what would be what would be the sales what would be the cost what would be the profit right so under that one they are the investment centers so our first learning objective is compute return on investment and show how changes in sales expect expenses and assets affect roi so the formula for return on on investment is net operating income or earning before interest and taxes it means it does not include the effect of interest and taxes divided by average operating assets the operating assets normally they are called the current assets N not the current current assets plus the uh, the <coughs> those long term assets who basically are productive so the empty land or investment you know you purchase a land for like 5 years to you know and after that you sell that are not the operating assets so just remember that the operating assets are cash account receivable uh, inventory plant equipment and other productive assets so all those for example short term investments or long term investments in the stock market they are not a part of operating assets operating assets are those assets who generate sales and ultimately generate net income right so formula is net operating income divided by average operating assets 